Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. Just thought we'd do part three, if you're wondering what I mean by part three. We did a back to basics video. As I said, I understand a lot of people already know this and plenty of people watching know more than me about these sorts of things, of course. And uh, there's a number of people that don't know kind of the basics. So I was just trying to help demonstrate. We did a video called How an Engine Works and that sort of talked about the pistons and what's going on here on this engine and then we did another one talking a little bit about the camshafts and the intake and exhaust and the valves and stuff like that. Now, this is part three. So what we're gonna do is, obviously the head's off at this point. You can see the pistons, just to recap, you know, pistons, you know, two down, two up. You can see what's going on here. Uh, this is, you've kind of seen it before, so we're not gonna to waste too much time on it. We're gonna turn the engine over and have a look at the other end. We've got the sump off. So if we can turn the engine over to have a look at the other end, and it may be a little bit dirty and oily, so this engine is getting repaired. It's at one of our 4 Before Diesel Workshop partners, getting a cheap as possible repair to get a vehicle back on the road. Um, okay, so don't be confused about what's happening over here. I want to be really clear, we already took one of the um, caps off here, right? Basically, here you want to demonstrate, you want to, you can hold it in the picture, yeah, if you want just, yeah, yeah, turn, turn it around halfway so they can see the bearing. Let's demonstrate the bearing that's in there. When we say a bearing, it's not always a bull bearing, that's your bearing in there that actually comes out. Gee, unless it's, yeah, it does, of course it does. <laughs> unless it's different to other engines I've done. Okay, so, and you've got the same at the other end of the conrod. So, what, we, what we've done is we removed the bolts, taken the cap off, and we're gonna pop the piston out now. So we'll demonstrate and show you what the piston and the conrod looks like. Um, so we probably need a, uh, something soft to give it a bit of a tap. Won't take much to get it out. Somebody needs to put their hand underneath and catch it. <laughs> Plonk. It is rubbish. We're not too worried about it, by the way, guys. Um, you might need to take the bolts off. No, it clears it. Okay, good. Um, basically, yeah, that's the crack piston on this engine. And there it is. Have a look at that, eh? Let's bring it up into the picture, please, Johnny. Remember not to put your face in the video. You don't want to be famous. No, no, I think we're okay. Around here, we're okay. So guys, this is what the piston, and uh, if you want, just sit it there for a minute. Just sit on the top anyway. It's a crack piston, we're not worried about it. It's uh, scrap metal now, and uh, that's what it looks like. So basically, at this end here, we already mentioned it, but we didn't really demonstrate because we couldn't see it. Now, if you remember, I talked about the crankshaft in part one, and you can see this bolt here goes into the crankshaft at the front. Um, and of course at the other end is your driven end. So at the front here, that's where your harmonic balancer goes and that drives things like the belt for your alternator. And there's some, as I said, some gearing in the front we're not gonna get into in this video. Um, but that drives all your timing belt and connects, and everything external, your drive belts with your water pump, your alternator and that sort of stuff. And at the other end, at the back of the engine, is where your flywheel or whatever the case may be, drive plate bolts on and connects to your transmission. So this, part here is your crankshaft so that goes all the way through here through these bearings that's the bearing where it's fixed that's to the block this is obviously these are your conrods okay so all the pressure of that explosion we demonstrated that hits pushes that piston down has to go through all these connection points as well okay and you can see for a uh, four cylinder engine these are quite a decent size big end bearings and usually they last ages they don't have any issues whatsoever unless there's oil starvation problems like blocked oil pickups. And as you can see, this one, let's have a closer look. It's in pretty good condition, just having a quick look without cleaning it. That is in really awesome condition, to be honest. So just with at, at a quick look, we're gonna clean it up and um, have a better look at it. Um, if we can, let's, let's get that piston out of the way and let's turn the engine over and have a look at the crankshaft turning so everybody can see how the con rods and the pistons and how everything works together. So, love your work over here, thanks mate. Thanks Johnny. Just slow, slow turn over, like, a, like your electric motor, just slowly turning it over. 
Look at that guys, so all the force going up and down, it's not going straight up and down, it actually has to push sideways and then go across in a change of direction to go back the other way. And you know how fast this is all happening? It's just crazy. When you think it through, it's just amazing everything lasts as long as it does. I'm just, you know, just amazing, look at that. So that, that's what goes on guys, just have a look at that for a minute so you get the picture. Piston's coming up, so piston going, if we're talking about this one, piston going, well it's going up now, well it depends which way you look at it, the engine's upside down. So let, let me do the strokes for you. Remember in part one we talked inlet, compression, power and exhaust. Okay, so that's exhaust if you like. That's inlet as the piston comes up, it'd be sucking the air in. Compression as it goes back the other way. Boom, the fuel goes in. It, and yeah, whatever, you know. Exhaust, out it goes out the exhaust pipe. So hope you get a picture of what's going on here. There's a few components missing, obviously, you're all pick up and we've taken the sump off already. But just to give you an idea for those people that have never seen inside an engine and the crankshaft end and the way the bearings work here on the big ends, um, both at the Conrod and in here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Johnny, you got anything I should add in there that I haven't told him? Because I'm a bit vague. I don't know. Any covers it pretty well. Let's flip it. Yeah, let's flip it so you can have a look again. That's a good idea. If we can please flip the engine over 180 and um, see how the pistons go up. And yeah, down. you can watch the pistons go up and down with it turning. That's a good idea. Bit tight that one. <laughs> Try some lube. <laughs> Spray some uh, spray grease on it, maybe that'll help. I'll put grease on that part as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, right. Just need to balance the engine mm -hmm. a bit. Yeah. Okay, so this is pretty cool because we've got one at the top. Obviously, the one at the back's not there because it's missing. We've taken it out, right? So this could be, say, inlet. These ones could be on compression. Whatever the case may be, we're not being exact here, but and you can just see constantly going up and down. So every time fuel's injected. It's that explosion in this small area here that creates the power to turn the crankshaft that you just looked at. So when you get that picture in your head, you probably go, yeah, it's amazing these last as long as they do. Now, so when you've got, you know, worn injectors, wrong combustion, or you've added a chip or a tune, and you're making a bigger bang here, right? All the force to make the more power the more torque, it is more force on this piston every time. It's more force right here to do that. And I hope you saw, well, we probably need to look at that other piston that's out if we can. Where did that piston go? All that force translates through the piston and the connecting point is the gudgeon pin, right? And of course, that's, and it, let's have a look at the top of this piston because it is cracked, right? You can see the crack there, straight across the top of the gudgeon, okay? And this is, you know, this one had a chip. I'm just going to be clear. It had a Steinbauer chip. That's what it had for 20,000 Ks. Um, this engine was only two and a half years old. This engine had full DLC injectors. These are 110 pistons, okay? So if you think you've got it figured out and you've got to have the, you know, the 110 pistons and they're indestructible, I've said it before, it's just not that easy to make an indestructible piston. The evidence is here. And that's another reason why we say the chips and tunes are a contributor. But this is not about that. This is just really trying to show you, to paint a picture, A, how an engine works with all that valve gear, um, showing you the crankshaft because the way it was before, we couldn't show you the other end and the way, not only is it going up and down, it's kind of got to go around, it's just not a natural thing. So it's amazing they work as well as they do. You're getting quite a lot of power. When you consider the weight of your vehicle, all those modifications, bull bars, bigger tires, your boat or your caravan, how, much weight and wind resistance these little pots here have got to move you'll understand your engine's quite underpowered it does put out very good power and torque for the size of the engine you certainly shouldn't be asking any more from this diesel engine in my opinion and that's where you're going to have problems they're maxed out they're a good engine if you do the maintenance 99.999 percent you're not going to have any issues um, bada bing i don't know that's about it as far as part three goes i hope you can see that um, I hope that's been helpful for you to understand the operation a bit more. We'll let these guys get on with getting this engine repaired. If you got something out of that, please give us the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell on if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Bada boom, bada bing. See ya.